Hello, my friend, and welcome to Wisdom Trek. I am Guthrie Chamberlain, your guide to wisdom and creating a living legacy. Thank you for joining us for our five-day-per-week wisdom and legacy-building podcast. This is day 708 of our trek and time for our Philosophy Friday series. Each Friday, we will ponder some of the basic truths and mysteries of life and how they can impact us in creating our living legacy. We are focusing on how to live with less fear. We are exploring the trails on our trek of life that will help us to be fearless. This does not imply that we'll ever reach a point where we are completely without fear, for that is not only impossible, but also not wise. There is a time and a place for an appropriate level of fear, but most of the fears that we experience on a daily basis has no grounding and can be eliminated as we grow in wisdom, insight, and understanding. So our objective is to experience a fearless Friday on our trek of life. We are broadcasting from our studios at the Big House in Marietta, Ohio. As we continue our lesson from last week, we pick up on the story of Naaman from 2 Kings chapter 5, verses 1-17, through 17, where Elisha has told Naaman to dip seven times in the Jordan River to be cured of his leprosy. If you missed last Friday's lesson, it can be found at wisdom-trek.com forward slash day dash 703. Overcoming fear does not have to be some grand feat, but a small miracle of trusting God and His Word. Today on our trek, we will continue to explore how we need to be in a continual mind shift mode so that we can have the power to overcome fear. When General Naaman approached Elisha for the cure, Elisha didn't even bother to come out and meet him. Instead, he sent a servant out with orders from God. This infuriated Naaman. He was the commander of the entire Syrian army, which comprised several thousand soldiers. He was certainly used to being shown a high level of respect. His money, power, and position had given him a great amount of prestige. The fact that Elisha did not even come to the door to greet Naaman was an insult. Naaman's pride got in the way of the cure. He wanted to be cured, but on his own term and not in obedience to God's word. He almost turned his back on God, but his officers talked him into at least trying to do what Elisha had said. He had already traveled a far distance, and they told him he had nothing to lose. This caused Naaman to have a change of heart, however reluctantly. God used Naaman's obedience to show the world that there is power in God's word, even if it does not always fit societal norms. We need to realize that in the times of the deepest fears, God can use these opportunities to strengthen our faith. Naaman had money, power, and prestige, but none of these could overcome his fear of his leprosy. The immediate cure Naaman gained through obedience was even more miraculous because it could not be bought with any price. Using his weakness and fear, God was teaching Naaman that relief only came through obedience. Our fears can also be used to stretch and strengthen our faith when we overcome them through obedience. Naaman found the thought of washing in a dirty river embarrassing. Just as this command was unique to Naaman, God's call on our lives is also personal. Fearing what people think of us is the opposite of fearing God. Whose approval do you fear losing? Your friends? Your family? Your leaders? Or is it God? Oswald Chambers said, The remarkable thing about God is that when you fear and respect God, you fear nothing else. Whereas when you don't fear and respect God, you fear everything else. Pride is the first enemy that we have to battle when we face our fears. Anger usually follows closely behind. Naaman was prideful and then angry with Elisha because it hurt his pride. Because he felt Elisha was telling him to do something unreasonable, got him even angrier. Naaman was ready to pay good money for the cure. Instead, Naaman was so insulted, so angry, that he almost turned around and went home to live with the fear of leprosy that plagued him and would eventually take his life. His officers wisely pleaded with him in 2 Kings chapter 5, verse 13, and it says, But his officers tried to reason with him and said, Sir, if the prophet had told you to do something very difficult, wouldn't you have done it? So you should certainly obey him when he simply says, Go and wash and be cured. If Elisha had sent Naaman on some great quest, climbing mountains and slaying foes, he would have gladly done it. Then the cure would have been based on his power and might. Instead, God only required obedience. Naaman could not believe that and thought it was too demeaning and easy. Could God really overcome his leprosy by dipping in a muddy river? He probably thought that it would contaminate his open sores. His unbelief and pride nearly robbed him of what he desired most. How many blessings do we miss out on because of our lack of simple obedience to God's precepts? Are we letting unbelief rob us of what we desire most? 
Following God's precepts is not always easy, but it is always the right thing to do. We all do have fears and need God's power to overcome them. Just like Naaman's officers encouraged him to be obedient, we have other believers to come alongside us and God's Holy Spirit within us to encourage and guide us when our faith is weak and our fears are strong. When Naaman continued to dip himself in the muddy Jordan River, submerging his entire body over his head, there was no record of partial healing on the first six dips. It was not until he emerged from the seventh dip that his body was made new. 2 Kings chapter 5.14 So Naaman went down to the Jordan River and dipped himself seven times, as the man of God had instructed him, and his skin became as healthy as the skin of a young child, and he was healed. Naaman's life was completely changed after his obedience. No longer did he have a fear of slowly dying as his leprosy ravaged his body from the outside. Only after his healing was complete was he able to meet Elijah. He still wanted to pay for his healing, but Elisha refused all offers. So instead, Naaman requested soil from Israel that he could take back to Syria as holy ground, which he would worship the one true God. Naaman overcame his fear of leprosy, his fear of ridicule, and his pride through obedience of God's word as spoken through Elisha. It was the power of the word that brought victory over fear. So allow God to help you overcome the fear in your life. Next Fearless Friday, we'll explore faith that overcomes fear. I know that you'll find these insights interesting and profitable in living your rich and satisfying life. Our next trek will be Mindshift Monday, where we will help you to live differently by thinking differently. So encourage your friends and family to join us, and then come along with us on Monday for another day of Wisdom Trek, Creating a Legacy. If you'd like to listen to any of the past daily treks or read their associated journals, they are all available at wisdom-trek.com. You can also subscribe at iTunes and Google Play so that each day's trek will be downloaded to you automatically. And thank you so much for allowing me to be your guide, your mentor, but most importantly, I am your friend as I serve you through the Wisdom Trek podcast and journal. And as we take this trek of life together, let us always live abundantly, love unconditionally, Listen intentionally, learn continuously, lend to others generously, lead with integrity, and then leave a living legacy each day. I am Guthrie Chamberlain, reminding you to keep moving forward, enjoy your journey, and then create a great day every day. See you on Monday.